Most times when I go lure fishing for bass, I'll either use plugs or soft plastics. And we're very lucky these days that we've got such a wide choice of fantastic lures that will cope with most conditions. We've got the floating, very shallow diving plugs that are ec absolutely excellent over shallow rough ground. And we've got the floating diving plugs that will dive a little bit deeper if you need to work a lure a little bit deeper. Then we've got some surface plugs such as poppers and walk the dog style plugs, which are again a, a great way to target bass given the right conditions. And then we've got the much heavier sinking plugs like these one ounce and one and a half ounce needlefish plugs from the US. A great plug to fish off of a surf beach over a sandy surf beach when there's a moderate surf coming in and a moderate breeze. And they will cope with those conditions well. And of course we've got our, our soft plastics which we can fish weedless and weightless again given that the conditions will allow you to do that or fish them with a jig head, maybe to work the lures in slightly deeper water. So a fantastic choice. But there are occasions when these lures just cannot cope with the conditions. And the conditions I'm talking about are when there's a very, very strong wind and a heavy sea, maybe a big surf. And the usual way, of course, would be to fish those conditions would probably be to fish bait and, uh, and cast out a grip anchor a grip lead out there and that's a great way to fish and I do fish that way except when there's lots of weed around but there are occasions when I like to fish a heavy surf and a, and a strong wind with lures but what I tend to do when none of these lures can cope with those conditions is fish with a different type of lure that will cope with those conditions and we'll have a little talk about those lures now. And that's these metal lures otherwise known as jigs or casting jigs and there's a couple of big differences between these and your normal plugs and your soft plastics and the first is their casting ability they will cast into a strong breeze, a very strong breeze with no problems at all but the other is their ability to deal with those heavy seas that he heavy surf pounding in whereas your other your plugs your other plugs and soft plastics just can't cope with it now as, as, as regards weight i keep uh, a range of weights with me and usually start in at the lowest about an ounce if i can get away with it but more often than not i have to use a weight range between 40 grams just under an ounce and a half up to 60 60 grams just over two ounces Usually that weight range is what I need to use in a heavy sea Now the fishing of these is pretty straightforward Or at least the way I fish them. It's just a matter of casting them out and reeling them in cranking them in at whatever pace You need to reel them in to keep them work, working in the water column in, in relatively shallow water Which we'll have a look at later but they have an action. Some of them don't look like they, they will have an action, but they do. This particular type goes through the water when you just reel it in with a slalom action, like that. But then you've got others like this type that are not dead straight. They, they built, built with a bit of a kink, so they have an action of their own. So the fishing of them is pretty straightforward. Now, of course, if you're fishing with heavy lures from, let's say, ounce and a half up to just over two and a half ounces you have to have the rod that will deal with it so rather than using my normal lure rod which is only a, a, a 10 to 35 gram what I tend to, to do when I'm fishing this type of lure is use a much heavier lure rod and this particular one it will cast with 60 cast 60 grams with no problems at all it's actually a a 40 to 80 gram lure rod a bit longer than I normally use this is 10 foot where I usually only use about 8 foot these days so I would say what you need when you want to work these heavy lures is a rod let's say between 9 and 10 foot that will comfortably cast up to 60 grams which this one does <laughs> 
So what we'll do now is we'll I'll show you some footage of a session I had recently where I went down to a beach. I knew it was going to be surfy, but didn't realise it was going to be quite as rough. So I started off trying to fish with the the heavy sinking plug, but then had to swap over and fish with the metal lures. Now because it was so breezy on this this occasion, I couldn't do any live commentary. So all of the footage is narrated, but let, let's have a look at, at, at what happened. At the beach, there was a big sea coming in and it was a big spring tide with strong currents, but also hitting me from the right hand side was a very strong wind. I've got the windscreen on the microphone and you can't really hear how windy it was. There was also some big patches of weed moving through which would have made trying to fish it with bait, anchoring a bait out there, very difficult with the weed constantly hitting the line. I started off here trying to fish with the heavy plug, the one and a half ounce needlefish plug, which is a great plug to fish with in the surf and will cope with a moderate surf and a moderate breeze. But these conditions were just too much for it. After casting it out, I could see it just skipping along the surface, being pushed, pushed along by the, the side wind, the strong side wind, and unable to dig in. And no sooner had I cast it out that it was washed back to the shoreline again. But I carried on trying a couple of more times with the same result, but in the end gave up and decided to use the metal lures. So I've got a 60 gram jig on here. Now this thing casts like an absolute bullet and probably casts twice or three times further than any plug. But as soon as it hits the surface, I'm just reeling in quickly here to take up the slack caused by the strong side wind. But once I've done that, it's just a matter of a steady, just a steady retrieve. You see there that, that it just caught the, the bottom as I got closer to the shoreline. So, so all I've done is just raise the rod tip a little bit, a little bit higher, just to, just to keep the lure up a bit as it gets close to the shoreline. But of course there was a bit of a constant weed problem that I was having to deal with. But the good thing about using the lure instead of maybe trying to bait fish this I could see the patches of weed that were moving through and to try to avoid them I could just sort of cast to, cast to the side of them whereas of course if I was bait fishing I wouldn't be able to avoid, avoid the weed at, at all. But the weed was a little bit of a problem I'm just making sure that before I cast out again here that there's no weed on the lure because if you get weed, weed on the lure then, then the bass is just not going to take it. once again just reeling in quickly to take up the slack and then just a steady a steady retrieve it's quite surprising even though this is a 60 gram over two ounce metal lure and I'm only fishing here probably casting out into about six feet of water because of the strong sea the strong current the lure is actually is actually being lifted up and I don't have to reel that fast but if I do feel it hit the bottom, then all I do is maybe just raise the rod tip a little bit and or, or just and, or like that and then or perhaps just reel a little bit quicker just to keep it keep it from touching the bottom. You'll notice here when I'm reeling this lure in I, that I occasionally flick the rod tip up. And what that is the line is just being pushed down by the last breaker and the, and the breaker has got a bit of weed on it and, the, and I'm just flicking the rod tip up just to try and keep that line from being pushed down by the last breaker and, and being caught in the weed there, just flicking the bits of weed off. Well as you can see I'm into a bass here and the biggest problem with this bass, although it wasn't a very big bass, was when I got it very very close to the shoreline. And the reason for that is because there was such a strong current and there was a strong undertow. And if, if I was going to lose this bass, the time I was going to lose it was when I almost got it beached and it started getting dragged, dragged back by the undertow. 
The bass measured 44 centimetres, so not a big bass but always good to catch, particularly when the conditions prove challenging. Well that was just one occasion where the metal lure proved really useful in coping with those conditions. Now there's no doubt my first choice of lure would be the, the normal plugs and soft plastics, but these metal lures definitely still have a place in modern bass fishing. Now I wouldn't advise to, to fish these heavy lures over shallow rough ground, uh, even though you can still work them, work them shallow. But you probably risk too much tackle losses but on a surf beach fishing them over over sand in a heavy sea with a strong wind they're definitely worth having in your tackle box so once again i hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching